And we have here with us uh, Akin Toshiali, the Director of Digital Marketing from Granger. And Granger is going to be our partner for the Capstone. So we are going to have a chat with him for a little bit to talk about his background and his perspectives on what Granger brings to the table for this partnership. So welcome, uh, Akin, to uh, the short chat. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, as you said, I'm Director of Digital Marketing at Granger. Uh, what that means is I run page search, social, display, email, SEO teams. Uh, I'm basically in charge of um, you know, bringing high-value customers to our site. And when they leave our website, uh, I ensure that we continue having a relevant uh, conversation with them. Okay. So t tell me a little bit about you know, when I first thought of Granger as a partner, I said, uh, you know, MRO supplies, that's maintenance, repair, and operations, doesn't seem like a very, you know, hot topic where business-to-consumer marketing really happens. So explain, I know, but you guys are, you know, like number 13 in uh, yeah. sales and e-commerce in the U.S. Those two things were immediately caught my attention. Tell us more. Sure. So Granger uh, is the largest supplier of maintenance, repair, and operation products. So in this university, for example, there are lots of pipes, electrical conduits, there is sump pumps, there is window, and these have to be maintained. Those people that maintain these things, they have to uh, use certain types of gloves, certain types of hats, certain types of wiring, certain types of pumps, right? Uh, the, the pumps that you would find in a regular hardware store are not always, you know, uh, approved for a building of this size. So that industry is called MRO. And Granger is the largest provider of MRO products in the world. Um, we have, uh, you know, international company uh, locations in South America, Europe, uh, all the way to Japan. Um, as far as e-commerce, we are the 13th largest e-commerce company in the United States. That is uh, something I didn't know until I joined. <laughs> uh, it is a significant uh, amount of uh, dollars that we generate uh, digitally, and our digital um, uh, footprint has been growing exponentially over the years as the behavior of consumers as well as you know uh, B2B folks switch to online we are reaping some of those benefits okay so uh, you know, when you you sort of mentioned B2B but how is B2B marketing any different from sort of B2C which you might say okay you know, uh, Amazon is a B2C supplier mm -hmm. uh, or a B2C, uh, you know, online marketing or a marketing, marketing, you know, platform rather, mm -hmm. not just a marketeer. Uh, tell us something about sure. that. So it is actually a, from outside, a lot of people think that B2B is kind of, uh, you know, not so exciting because they don't understand, uh, you know, always the intricacies around marketing for B2B. Actually, once you understand it, it becomes extremely exciting because it is like a puzzle uh, compared to B2C. In B2C, for example, you know, you go to Amazon or Target website, doesn't matter, you look at a product. Uh, so they say, okay, you know, this visitor has an intent on TV. They might send you an email, send you a, uh, show you a display ad, give you an offer and try to bring you back so you can buy that product. In B2C, the person makes a decision on what they want to buy, they use their money, and they have their own timing on when they're going to buy it, and okay. they can buy it on a whim. Sure. None of those apply in B two B. In B two B, you have the head of building maintenance, and all of a sudden the sump pump goes out or starts to fail. So now he has to do some research on what type of uh, pump is the right pump for him today based okay. on today's rules regulations he has to do research once he knows which pump he has to buy he takes that information and he takes it to the university's procurement department mm. which is the buyer okay the buyer says okay well you know for this pump I have a contract with this company to buy some pumps from and then that person goes to their website or picks up the phone and makes a purchase once the purchase is made, that item is shipped to the, to the person that's going to install it. So if you think about it in terms of installer versus procurement, installer decides what, what needs to, to be purchased, but it is the procurement that actually purchases it. Mm. 
which is a complete paradigm when compared to B to C. In, we have a large number of visitors coming to our website. They do all kinds of research, but they don't buy anything, right? In B to C, you'd say, oh, well, that's my non-converting base, and I'm not going to market to them. Mm. And I have this small visitor base that come in, and they buy something almost every time when they come in. So those are my good, good customers, customers. Okay. and I'm just going to market to them. Sure. But in reality, if you think about it, we need to market to both. Absolutely. Both yeah. the purchaser yeah. as well as the installer, because the installer decides what needs to be purchased. So if I ignore them, I'm missing out. Mm. So I mean, but then I guess it, then it's fair to say that you're really a B two B firm, but your marketing is essentially to a consumer. You know that individual who's going to use your product, install your product, uh, and that influences you know back into the chain and then goes to the procurement manager. Absolutely, and some of those B two C analogies then kick in. Okay, the installer has his own needs. Installer needs to know: Do I have the right specifications? Do you have it in stock? How soon you can deliver it? Mm. Is it going to hit this mount, uh, fit this mounting bracket? Right? Those are his needs. The purchaser has different kind of needs. Mm. You know, will you be able to accept a PO? Uh, how can you combine that with this other thing that I'm ordering for this other building? Okay. If I place one order, can you ship half of it here, half of it there? So they both have needs, and so. The challenge becomes how do we identify those different personas and create uh, relevant messaging that would satisfy the needs of those different personas. So I think we, we briefly talked about uh, the complexity or sort of the variety of personas that you deal with. I know you had mentioned some you know, huge numbers. So tell us how, you know, in terms of people coming on the website, how many personas are you really tracking? So to, to keep it very simple, for uh, our uh, you know, business partners, whatnot, we, ca we say that there are two personas, the, the buyer and the installer. Okay. But then there are about 10 verticals we have. Okay. Okay. And then we have the you know, people that are a new customer versus an existing customer. Then we have people under contract versus no contract. Okay. And there are a couple of variables. And when you multiply all of that, all of that you can uh, get to a couple of thousand uh, wow. you know, uh, different cells of uh, audiences at that time, we call them audiences, that we uh, track and try to create a unique experience for. Wow. So in terms of sort of the biggest uh, budget allocation in terms of your digital marketing spend, where do you spend most of your, or sort of from top to bottom, what's the hierarchy? The hierarchy is uh, paid search is number one, okay. and then uh, so that would be ads on Google and stuff. Exactly. Okay. okay. And then we obviously break those uh, Google ads again by audience. Okay. Are you an existing customer? So that's the number of persona match to exactly. so campaigns to match all of these together. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and then the second one would be display media. Okay. And display media has uh, more audiences than paid search because they, it's a more mature channel for audience management. Okay. And that's your banner ads and exactly. all of that. Okay. Uh, number three would be email okay. team. Okay. Um, and then it is really social media okay. uh, for promoted uh, Facebook posts as well as tweets. And last but not the least is, is SEO. And most of the money SEO is obviously going to platform fees and whatnot. So in terms of you know the audience that we have for uh, the capstone, we have a global audience. You know, seventy-five percent of the students will be outside of the U.S. Uh, where do you think that the problems that Granger will you know pose to the students can have uh, impact for a global audience? Any thoughts on that? Sure. So you know, the the challenges that we are uh, trying to answer are are puzzles that would be applicable to most businesses, Okay. right? Each business has to acquire. They have to build awareness. They have to make that first sale after acquisition. Sure. They have to grow that customer. And if the customer um, uh, you know, goes somewhere else, you have to win them back, right? Those goals are, I believe, universal across any business model. 
Um, the, the interesting thing here is that with the amount of technology that we have access to and the complexity and the features that have been made available to us just in the last you know, couple of months, the level of um, individual marketing is becoming more and more relevant. Absolutely. It yeah. just makes it a lot more exciting. Um, as a marketer myself, it's kind of funny, you know, it uh, drives my wife crazy. We are watching TV and I see an ad and I'm like, why are they showing me this ad? It's like, it has nothing to <laughs> nothing do with to me. Do with me. Okay. You know, can't they just tap into my household public record and know that, you know, I'm we'll not get in there. that phase we'll get anymore, there. right? We'll get there. So yeah. now my expectations have changed. So consumers' expectations are changing. Businesses' expectations are changing. They're expecting the brand to, to know, know you. Them. And if you are showing them irrelevant ads, they say, you know what, this brand doesn't understand me. And then they'll go to a brand that understands them. Great. Yeah, I think it'll be. A, uh, we look forward to you know putting this together and having our students help solve uh, you know problems for you, and hope we can bring uh, enough sort of perspe perspectives from a global audience that help you you know find innovative solutions to your problems. So thank you for partnering with us. Absolutely, it's Great. my pleasure.